jolly gun marching home again. Hooray, hooray. We give him a hearty welcome then. Hooray, hooray. The men will cheer, the boys will shout, the ladies, they will all turn out. We'll all feel the pain when Johnny comes marching home. When Johnny comes marching home again. Hooray, hooray. We give him a hearty welcome then. Hooray, hooray. The men will cheer, the boys will shout, the ladies, they will all turn out. And we'll all feel the when Johnny comes marching home. The old church bell will feel the joy. Hooray. It's you Westerners that is going to decide this election. Take my advice, stick to Brian and free silver. Look at that buck tooth grin. Teddy Roosevelt ain't smiling at you. He's laughing at you. Teddy Roosevelt, the Eastern millionaire, out to rule the country. That's why he played cowboy. That's why he played soldier. Now he's playing politician. Wait a minute. We served on a Colonel Roosevelt, and we know him. And he's the greatest man alive today. What's he done to prove it? Rounded up a bunch of hoodlums, the Rough Riders, and then followed them up San Juan Hill. Oh. Now, don't worry, Roy. We got plenty of fighting to do in Arizona, and we get paid for it. Come on, soldier. Come on. Let me at him. Let me at him. Let me at him. Soldier, I'm Jim Horn. Glad to know you, Jim. My name's Rogers. Where do I deliver this? I'll take it in. Thanks, Ever. What kind of a skipper you got? How's he stand with the boys? Well, he's got a soft spot. We ain't found it yet. <laughs> You'll get a square deal, and that's all. Fair enough. Fair enough. Colonel Roosevelt speaks very well of you. The Border Patrol needs good men. But let me warn you, this is not the Army, and you're not under the eyes of an officer all the time. Therefore, you'll be held responsible for your own discipline while on duty. You'll be inducted into the service in the regular way. That's all. Three bar ranch was raided last night, sir. Two men from the line camp killed. My partner's taking charge of the bodies. This is the only evidence we've found. We picked up a trail of about a hundred steers and a number of horses and followed them to the Mexican border. Looks like Arizona Jack's work, all right. Get my horse. Say, that sounds mighty interesting. Who is this Arizona Jack? Bandit leader with more brains than most. Knows the desert like a coyote. He finds his loot on our side and he shot her across the line. We know the breed. Down in Cuba, we call them the Buscaderos. And when we ran them down, we usually found out they'd been paying off to the local lawman. Guess again, soldier. That Mexican head man down at Suarez is straight as a die. All the gold mines in his state couldn't buy Don Enriquez. And all of Arizona Jack's bandits couldn't buffalo him, neither. That guy must be all right, huh? Horn, you take charge. I'm going over across the border and have a talk with Don Enriquez. This Arizona Jack has got to be stopped before he loots the entire border. Senor Harrison, it is impossible to run down a man that nobody knows. A man nobody can even describe. We have done our best, but... Then we'll join forces. I'll bring my patrol over, and between us, we'll check every hole in your district till we smoke him out. See, si. but well, the captain forgets the little technicalities of the border. 
in the present state of international tension, I doubt if we can get permission for you to enter Mexico with an armed force. Permission or no, an imaginary line isn't going to stop the Border Patrol. Uh, but, senor, if you cross that line without the proper authority, it will be the grand excuse all the firebrands in your land and my land have been waiting for. This murderer, even if he is the worst outlaw on the border, he is not worth going to war over him. All right. Then I'll get the authority from my own government. And when I do, I'm coming down here whether you like it or not. Good day, sir. This where the men can see it when they come off duty. Yes, sir. It looks like he's still on the other side of the border. Well, if he shows up, I'll want you immediately. Where are you planning on spending your night's leave? Well, we generally do our relaxing at the Pulaney Cantina. Well, while you're there, keep your eye open for an American girl, about 20, well-dressed. She's supposed to be headed for the border. We have routine orders to detain and hold her. That's all. About 20, you're saying? Yeah. That'll be a pleasure. Yes, sir, me. Must be half jackrabbit. <laughs> the next time I want anything in a hurry from El Paso, I'll let you know, Rusty. All right, Roy. Right. <laughs> cool them off and feed them the best you have, Juan. in the back room. Three border patrolmen just came in. What are you going to do, Moray? Nothing. Yet. Tell your fortune, boy? Sure. Tell us about the future. We know all about the past. <laughs> Like a cold deck to me, Tommy. Hello, sis. How's about a little drink? Dad burned my buttons. Just I uh, getting ready for a shindig, too. <laughs> Leave it to Roy. He'll fix it up for you. <laughs> would you like to dance? Sure, I would. <laughs> Meet my friend here. Go ahead, I'll sing you a song. Aren't you going to get down while we change horses? No, I don't think so. How far are we from the border? Not very far now. You better have your papers ready. You mean 
mean I have to have a passport to get across? You sure do, Mom, especially in these times, they're pretty particular. Well, I'm too tired to go on anyway. Can I put up there for the night? Yes, Mom. That's what it's there for. Thank you. Senorita, have dinner? Yes, and a room. And tomorrow, I will need a horse and a guide. And will you please get this on the stagecoach before it leaves? It's very important. See, si, you wait here. I come soon, eh? I'll check up on it. Ramon, what was the young lady asking you? She wanted a horse and a guide for tomorrow. Pardon, I must get this on the stagecoach. I'll take it. Good evening, miss. The hotel keeper tells me you'd like to hire a guide. Why, yes. Where do you want to go to? Across the border. You see, there's some sort of a silly rule about a passport, and I... I lost mine. You understand? What would you do if you run into a border patrolman? Oh, I'd find some way to handle him. You see, they're only interested in smugglers and people of that sort. Not somebody like me. But they are. In fact, they have orders to detain you. How do you know? Well, you're not a... Yes. I'll have to ask you to come along to headquarters. Your name, please, miss. Give me that letter. I'm sorry, miss. with you, let's get it over with. I'm sorry, miss. What, but... again? You're the sorriest thing I've seen since I left Denver. We have no means of transportation. We'll have to wait till the States comes in from Mexico. It should be at the border now. Hello? Rogers? I get him. They want you in the telephone. Patrolman Rogers reporting, sir. Sorry to spoil your leave, Rogers, but you men have got to go back on duty immediately. You will take charge of the stage from Mexico when it arrives at the cantina and convoy it to the railroad. There's $60,000 in gold aboard. Yes, sir. And by the way, we picked up that girl you wanted. We'll put her on the stagecoach and drop her off at headquarters when we go by. All right. Those patrolmen are going to be on the stage when it pulls out. We'd better take care of them here. I've got a way.
was about a dance. Come on, let's hey, stop it. I don't want to fight in my cantina. Fight? <laughs> Why, there ain't no fight in them coppers. They're nothing but a bunch of tax collectors anyhow. <laughs> already left. We gotta run it down. Take care of him. I've got to get after that stage. Take over till I get back. them to the border, sir. But your orders were not to cross into Mexican territory. Very good. 
I'm glad I have some men that can obey orders. But Captain Harris, Roy wasn't to blame. He was on duty. Do you realize the results of that fight? No. Two civilians dead. A patrolman seriously wounded. A robbery. An escaped prisoner. An Arizona Jack out of our reach across the border. Hmm. From the railroad hospital. Patrolman Thomas Ward died on the operating table. You boys weren't entirely responsible. There were extenuating circumstances. And in view of your good records, I am not going to suspend you from duty. We're not asking for any favors. Then you are suspended under charges. I'll let you know when to report for the hearing. That's all. I knew something like this was going to happen, but I don't know why you have to make it worse. Would you rather have your badge or a chance to go after the men who murdered Tommy? Oh, I get it. You forced the old man's hand. And made him suspend this. Now we can go after those fake Mexicans across the border. And they won't fool us this time. Yeah, we'll be looking for Americans in Mexican outfits. Right. Crowley just phoned. He says every effort is being made to recover our shipment. He feels sure his men will catch Arizona Jack this time. Oh, he couldn't catch flies. Here he comes. Who? Oh. Here's your split for last night's job. Why bring it to me here? Because that ain't all I got, that's why. There was a girl, too. A girl? She had a letter in her purse from you. Her name's Dorothy Blair. She's your boss's daughter, isn't she? Yes. How much do you think she's worth in cash? You can't do that. Why not? You don't know Blair. If he comes down here and finds his daughter missing, he'll tear the border apart. Now leave it to me and we'll get more money out of the old boy than you expect. But how am I going to turn loose of her without tipping off that you and I are together in this gold robbery racket? You could leave a good horse conveniently around so she could escape. She'd get lost in the desert. Not if you told somebody to give her directions on how to reach the mine. I guess you're right. The old lady that's riding herd on her could do that. Now get out of here before you see him. What took so long? Something unexpected happened last night. Dorothy Blair was on that stage. What is she doing down here? How should I know? She was always quarreling with her father and threatening to run away. You got to know her pretty well while you were visiting there, didn't you? Well, yes, that's likely the reason she's here, to tell me her troubles and get sympathy. You've been writing to her. Of course not. On the trail, all right. Let's ride to the top and see what's ahead. Oh, Diner, there's no telling what's on the other side of that ridge. Town to make a good hideout, Roy. It might be worth looking into. Look. Drat that diner. If 
there's anybody down there, they might have seen me. Well, that's the chance we've got to take. Hey, Mosby. The Jasper with a ride mule is scouting us from the top of the ridge. Oh, yeah? Let's take a look around. Sure looks deserted. Well, don't let it fool you. you Got to be careful. Take him up. So you didn't get enough, huh? Hold it. Up with him. Boys, take him in the back room and lock him up till the boss gets here. Oh, come on, Luke. Yeah. <laughs> Just that'll hold him, boys. Very well. like the scrape she's in ain't taught her no manners yet. She's still giving orders. What do you know about me? Plenty. We're the border patrolmen. Well, why didn't you say so? Get me out of here. Listen, lady, chances are that none of us will get out of here alive. Who are you and what are you doing down here anyway? Very clever, aren't you? Trying to scare me into telling you so you can why my father and have him come down here and take me home. The trouble with you is, you've been reading the wrong kind of novel. And this happens to be a true story. Them two patrolmen were in the cantina last night came sneaking around while you were away. You still got him? Yeah, threw him in the back room and locked him up. Well, get rid of him. But we gotta get rid of the girl first. Mr. Patrolman. Please, do you really think we're in danger? Well, this Arizona Jack is no gentleman. I know of three men he knocked off yesterday. Well, then maybe I better tell you. Are you listening? We're listening. Then stop that strumming. Oh, no. I wouldn't think of letting you tell your whole life story without music. Oh, all right. I suppose you think I'm a silly little girl running around trying to cause a lot of trouble, but I'm not. I have business down here. You see, I was coming down to marry Mr. Lanning, the manager of the Amco Gold Mine. Why didn't you keep going? Because I didn't have a passport. That was the reason I was writing to Mr. Lanning. By the way, what did you do with my letter? Forgot it. Oh, if you'd only had sent it, why, Mr. Lanning would know something had happened to me, and by this time have all his men after us. Riding days are happy days on the rolling plain, swaying in the saddle all day long. In my heart I find the song here on the range with you. Clouds of gray, they fade away and it never rains. The sun is always shining from above. And I find the life I love here on the range with you. The yellow moon that rolls along up yonder will always keep shining bright to light a train. Wherever we may wander over the rolling plains at night, riding down the western trails under skies of blue, swaying in the saddle all day long. Life will always be.
It has nothing to do with music, of course. But I just saw your bandits riding away. I wonder what that means. Mean it no good, I'll bet. Go quickly. I'll let you get away while they are gone. All three of us? Oh, no. No, the man. I should be killing for that. But I can't go away and leave them here. Quit arguing. You would waste time. Go ahead. If you consider yourself a waste of time, all right. Put this on. to the Amco mine. That way. Gracias, señor. Gracias. What do you make of that? There's only one answer. You mean Arizona Jack's got religion? What are you doing here? Well, you didn't think I'd leave you here to be killed, did you? Well, they'll see your horse and we'll all be killed. No, they won't. I left him back in the Arroyo. Nobody saw me. Now you're wasting time. Come on. All right, you go back to your horse and keep going. We'll catch up with you later. You find our horses and bring them here. I'll get some guns.
Well, I see you got away. Sure. We lost them fellas an hour ago. Come on, let's get a drink. Hey, you ain't gonna drink this, are you? No, but the horses would like to have a little. Well, it can't be much further to the mine now, so if you don't mind, I'll go on alone. Oh, but we do mind. Why do we? Because we're still responsible for it. Just how well do you know this man, Lanning? Well, you don't think I come down here all the way to marry a stranger, do you? You're about the only girl in the whole world who would do a thing like that. <laughs> well, all right. George Lanning is American, white, and over 21, and a very successful engineer. Now, do you approve? How successful? Well, Dad says he runs our mine efficiently, and Dad doesn't like him. You still haven't told me what kind of a man he is. Well, I would say he's the most wonderful man in the world. Well, I hope so. What is this? A meeting of the Board of Guardians? What's the idea of knocking Lannan? You ain't got a Chinaman's chance, Roy. She's as good as hitched to him right now. Would you like to make a little bet on that? Who's wasting time now? Come on! But, Mr. Blair, it isn't my fault your daughter ran away. It is your fault. You made love to her when you were with us in Denver. And you've probably been writing to her ever since. But I... I, oh, I... don't bother to lie about it. I don't care if you did or you didn't. I want my daughter. Where is she? I told you I don't know. Well, then find her. Why don't you do something? You're mad at me for running away, aren't you? I certainly am. But I guess you wouldn't have done it if I hadn't made you so doggone mad. But I'm still going to marry George. Well, if you think that much of him, go ahead. I don't care what you do. What I want to know is what happened. Who are these, uh... Oh, it's all very simple. I was captured by bandits, and these border patrolmen rescued me. Roy, Rusty, meet my father, Mr. Blair. And Mr. Lanning. Glad to know you, Mr. Blair. But we didn't rescue your daughter. No. She rescued us. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very likely. But it doesn't sound so simple to me. Say, what about a drink while we talk it over? Yes. I'm sorry, sir, but we're still on duty. Oh, Roy. Then come back later? Thank you, we will. I just remembered something important I have to attend to at the office. I'll be right back. What do you mean, we're on duty? We're still responsible for that girl. You couldn't stop them wedding bells from ringing now if you had to cut the rope. What happened? Now, don't worry. I've got the old boy eating out of my hand. What about the girl? Well, she's had a rough time of it, but neither one of them blame me. You know what I mean. What about her and you? She doesn't mean a thing to me. We want to see Mr. Lanning. His office is right in there. Well, gentlemen, is there any practical way in which I can express my appreciation for what you've done for Miss Blair? There certainly is, Mr. Lanning. Of course, we know where Arizona Jack's hideout is, but if we're going to capture him, we've got to have more men. Oh, yes, uh, that's true. It's uh, too late today, but I'll have all the men you need in the morning. Are you sure you have everything figured out? Just about. Everything? Except why Arizona Jack paid off that old squaw to help that girl get away. Say, do you suppose he could have been playing up to somebody? All right, Mr. Lanning, we'll be back in the morning. Oh, Harry, saddle my horse and bring him around front. I got you, Roy. I got you. Go what? Why, you kicked me in there. I sure let the cat out of the bag to Lannan, didn't I? Whatever got into you popping off like that? I thought you were wise. I know I shouldn't have had them wisdom teeth pulled out. Oh, well, that's all right, Rusty. You're usually way ahead of me. Thanks, Roy. Thanks. Thank you. 
It's working out like you said, Roy. He's heading for Sodata, right? Would you like to have half the gold you kicked back to Lanning? Go on. I'm through with him. Why? He thinks he's going to marry Mr. Blair's daughter. But I'm not going to let him. When I get through talking, he'll be through with women for years. Suppose Lanning did marry into the Blair family. Looks like he'd be more valuable than ever if you didn't talk. on your mind. All right, boys, bring it up. Now, look, Maury, those patrolmen saw you letting Miss Blair escape and paying off the old lady for helping her. Yeah? Now, one of them is smart enough to figure out that you wouldn't do that unless you were doing it for somebody who was interested in it. And that'd be you. That's right. They suspect us of being partners. Of course, he hasn't got a very strong case. But if he ever lays it before Blair and he starts investigating, I'm through. Who figured this out? Well, the young one. The old one couldn't figure the time of day. Well, you're well fixed anyway. How much gold you got hidden in the mine? Oh, uh, about $100,000 worth. $100,000 is a nice cut. You don't think very fast, Lenny. All right, come on, you ask for it. All right, saddle up, we're riding. And get the wagon ready. We're gonna have company, and we're not coming back. All right, get moving. Ride back to headquarters and get the Rough Riders. Bring them to the mine. I'll figure out some way to stall for time till you get there. How about Harrison? Oh, don't tell him. I hold Diner! But we can't go down there. Harrison's orders are not to cross the border. Oh, forget Harrison. Roy says it's boots and saddles for all you rough riders. Come on, keep going. Come on, knock on it. Rusty 
Coburn's taken all the Rough Riders over the border to the Amco mine. came from the camp where they had us locked up. Arizona Jack and the whole outfit are on their way here to loot this place. Where's Mr. Lanning? If you can find anything that will shoot, grab it. Now take a half a dozen men and get the gold. Rose will show you where it is. All right. The rest of you come with me. We can't hold out here. There's too many of them. All right, bang it in. Find that girl. Patrol has crossed your border without authority. Why, senor? Rogers sent word that Arizona Jack is attacking the mine at Amco. Rogers? Yes, one of my patrolmen. Suspended from duty under charges. Apparently, he followed Jack down here. Now, I assure you, I didn't authorize those men to cross the border. In fact, it was against my orders. How many men? Eleven. Are they all good fighting men, senor? Yes, but... One moment, Tito. First, let us have a drink. We'll never get him this way. You come with me. Now, the rest of you, stay here and cover him. There's only three shells left. If they rush us, we're done for. I'm going to blow up the entrance and seal us in until help gets here. Isn't that pretty dangerous? It's our only chance. You and Dorothy get back as far as you can. Follow the track until I overtake you.
like you're in this roundup, too, sister. You better get down. Senor Harrison, you understand I am not to appear in this matter. And what will your report say? Without going into official details, it will say that the prisoners were caught red-handed with a stolen bullion from the Amco mine. And where were they caught? It won't say. Well, as long as they were caught and Senor Blair has his gold, it doesn't matter. Yes, and I got something back far more valuable to me than the gold. <laughs> Are you still worrying about Lanny? You win, Roy. Rogers? Hogan? The way things have turned out, the Alcoli and myself are more than willing to overlook your recent, uh... Irregularities. Yeah. That's all. Well, oh boy, we'll see you again soon. Thank you, sir. 